Hi, this is James Goodale. I'm the host of the Telecommunications and Information Revolution. And we're sitting here tonight with Lou Maletta and with Robin Bird. Lou Maletta is the president and founder of the Gay Cable TV Network. And Robin Bird really needs no introduction. She's a veteran of 20 years on Manhattan Cable TV. The reason we're sitting here tonight is that these two and Mr. Goldstein, their peer in this business, sued Time Warner because Time Warner effectively wanted to get them off Channel 35 here in Manhattan Cable. And they've won. Their case, in effect, a, a companion case, is going to the Supreme Court. And in fact, it was argued recently, and it may even be decided by the time that this show hits the airwaves. And the question is, what will the Supreme Court do to their case? Now, let's just discuss a little bit, uh, Robin and Lou, what this case is about. Basically, what Time Warner wanted to do was they wanted to scramble your signal. Right. And that effectively, would that have really put you off cable TV? Oh, well, it doesn't necessarily put us off the television, but it does take away the chances of anyone watching without coming out and saying, yes, I am, what we call it is a pervert, because that's what they're, they're actually labeling people, is uh, I have to sign, as a, as a subscriber, I would have to sign a card that says, yes, I am Ms. Bird, and I watch Channel 35, and I want it unscrambled from the hours of 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So that was the second part of it. See, it wasn't just the scrambling that would put us off the air. It's the fact that people had to request the channel to be put it's on the air. Well, so what's wrong with that? Because you come out of the closet. You lose your chances of first-time viewers. Confidentiality it, was never there. Time Warner's not confidential with their lists. They didn't even, the judge who heard this case didn't even get a card in the mail asking did whether or not... Did the judge want to watch your show? Sure. Of course, he was, he actually did say that he was a uh, participant of viewing those type of shows and he the did judge, not, he the, never got a card in the mail. And a lot of viewers, actually a lot of viewers of mine had stated that they never got these cards. So it wasn't even given out to all the subscribers. It seems that it was picked and choose to who they're going to give well, the Well, what, they sent the cards out and they got some back. How many did they get back, do you know? They claimed there were 50,000, 60,000, but... Um, well, that's quite a bit. Out of mm -hmm. the mailing of 300,000, but they also claimed that they had 300,000 cards. Mailed. So they that's didn't actually mail 300,000. One so minus got... Mr. Sands, Judge Sands. I one, never received I one. Ne and I never received my card, so... Okay, so there's one point you lose your audience. Right. But the other point, confidentiality, I mean, is that a really big deal? I would think it is. Well, what happens when you go into uh, one of these video tape stores? Yes. You know, they don't take your name and address when you buy a tape. They don't you know? tape you of coming in not. and... Of course not. Oh, wait a minute now. You never went into one of those stores. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they don't, they yeah, don't photograph <laughs> you and, and fingerprint you and say, yes, well, they well take, you're... But they take, my, uh, they take my American Express card, right? That's just sure, of course. So but they, but no, they don't no one have your address list. or they don't even request that you're over, 20, over 18. Or was it over 21? 21. I think it was over 21. Right. So you have to not only state your age... But you also have to say, yes, I want to get that type of programming. What type of programming are we? Well, how about uh, when you call up Time Warner now to get Playboy Channel? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be 21. You, you just dial up. You just dial it and you and get they don't, it and they don't automatically. Know, and they don't know? No, nope. automatically. Appears, but it appears, but appears, right on, appears right on your sure. bill. They don't so care as long as you pay your bill. So they've got the bill. Right. Yes. They've got your name on it. Right. Yes. So if they wanted to figure out who it was that was there, they watching it, they could do it, right? So absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But this is a different situation. Why is this different? Because it's different because we have programming that, that goes a wide gamut of programming. And by signing this piece of this document, you are, you are in, in, a, in a way, putting yourself on a list of people who subscribe to this kind of programming. Playboy is a, a different type of programming than we have. We're uh, in some ways a little more explicit than Playboy is. And uh, we're free. 
Well, you were, you're free. We're free. Well, um, you don't have to. But isn't this the real problem? What? Is that you're free because you must have some sort of financial support somewhere. We can talk about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if your audience shrinks from 300,000 people to 50,000 people. Our Absolutely. advertising base is lost. So, I mean, this isn't a big First Our Amendment. Viewership. This isn't a big First Amendment fight. It's just, it's just another no, media, it is a First Amendment. Another, another media, another media <laughs> problem where, uh, you know, no, another media, it, uh, another no, media it is type a first, coming out it is of it. It's a First Amendment issue. It, it's a First Amendment issue. Um, I, for, for one, feel that the human body is not indecent. See, Lou and I, we have different shows. But uh, for myself, I show the human body. And they're dancing. It's an art form. The human body is an art form. My intent is not to be indecent. What is indecent? That hasn't, been, that hasn't been stated either. I think homelessness is indecent. I think people that don't have enough food or, or people who only have a, no, the children have no family, that's indecent. I don't think that the human body dancing around to songs is indecent. We can't, we can't be explicit if that's what it's leading to. The original idea of cable was for minorities groups that were unrepresented on television to have a voice on television to speak to other people who were interested in what they had to say. We're, uh, I, I produce television for gays and lesbians. We do a gamut of television, everything from Gay USA, which is a new show, to things like In the Dungeon and Men in Films, which uh, deals with erotica and, and the male uh, in the erotica. The, we're talking to a group of people who want to see this material. If you subscribe to television, you should be able to get what you want. If you go out and buy a copy of, of Playboy, you should be able to get a copy of Playboy without signing a receipt saying that, yes, I want a copy of Playboy. You've already paid for it. Cable, you already paid for. When you get that cable, Time Warner had the, has the ability to send a little letter to you when you're subscribing and say, Channel 35 might have material that you might not like to look at. It's going to be explicit material. We can turn that off before you even get it in your home. We can make sure that you, you or your children never see but there's it. No, there's no secret what the problem is here. The, well, the, the, the problem is that Time Warner doesn't like it. Of well, course. It's, it's, it's now, not now, only... Let, but don't, excuse me just for a second. I want to get back to what's going to happen. If they cut you down to 50,000 subscribers, are you guys out of business? Pretty well, much so. Certainly. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, how is your business, uh, how does it work? Well, we get subscribers. We, we, we get uh, the rather uh, commercial advertising. And who are the advertisers? Uh, well, everybody from, from uh, a part of our programming is, is uh, the Board of Health of the City of New York does. Uh, Board some, of Health does? Well, yeah, because the, mail, uh, the, the Office of Gay and Lesbian Health Concerns is uh, one of the ways that they uh, get the information out to the general gay and lesbian public is through a segment that we have on our show that directs itself towards uh, the issues of health that are concerning gays and lesbians like AIDS, like hepatitis, uh, like any of the other diseases that seem to be uh, in their large What faction. sort of other advertising do you have besides that? Well, we have uh, everything from bookstores to, uh, to uh, um, restaurants. And they're there because... How do, sell, how do you sell the ads? Well, we just recently did a demographic survey. <laughs> of that's how many him. people that's for him. <laughs> that, that what, no free what, commercials. I'm giving you a free commercial this. already. To show oh, yeah. you know, who watches right. the show. Yeah. As you can see, you know, Robin, Robin is uh, the most watched show on television, as, as far as cable goes. And then that's right after... show. I also have a gay show called Robin Bird's Men for Men. And, and right after that is Gay USA and, and several of the other shows that, that we produce. So we use this to show um, potential advertisers who is watching the show. And we also use this a, as an argument against uh, them turning us off because this shows them that there are a lot of people who are watching the show. They're getting an audience through the programs that we produce. They're getting people who are buying subscriptions to, to Time Warner because Robin and I are on. 20 years ago when I started there was no programming on cable at all except for myself and a couple of other shows, Al Goldstein of course. Um, in, that, in that time frame from then and now, it's the time slots that we have are all of a sudden very popular. We cannot, I personally cannot sell my airtime to the big advertising agencies, the blue collar agencies, the 
as I would want because I don't have these demographics. Um, I didn't personally come out and make a survey, but Nielsen does not supply independent producers like myself. They have to give, give this to Time Warner. Time Warner will not supply us with the numbers. However, they do base their, their rates on subscribers. Let me, let me and ask. I built up this. I actually believe that I built the system you for them. You built the system. And the subscribe. Well, the subscriber rate, because more people would come in and say, "Hey, this great show on television," and more people would get subscribed. More more people would subscribe to the system. It's a question I've always wanted to ask you. How did you get started in this line of work? Oh, uh, I don't know if you have enough time for it. But in a, I was at we the don't. right place <laughs> at the right time, and um, I just started producing myself. Just I, used to one do, day? I used to do adult films. You did real adult quick. films? I used to do adult films and um, somebody had asked me to host a show and I didn't want to host it because that was 20 years ago and cable was the lowest end of the stick. Um, I said no, no, no. They begged me. I said yes, okay. Well, and how did you actually get to the cable system? The person who was originally producing the show didn't pay their bills, and I went to go do the show again, and the cable said, you can't do it unless you produce it yourself. I'm like, well, what does a producer do? Well, 20 years later and three, four shows later that I produce, here I am producing. I found out what a producer does, everything. <laughs> well, Sir, you're really in, in the media business at this time. You're a producer, you buy and sell advertising. And if I do the direction, yeah. I do the camera when the people are on in front of the camera, I do the editing when I do the post-production, although the show is live every Wednesday, we are on other nights, I'm on every night of the week with different shows, I edit those together from the ones that we do live, and uh, like the Bird Brain show, my 970 Bird but, show. And but if, if, time order, if Time Order puts you on a scrambled signal, you're not, you're not going to be on the airwaves anymore. No. Is that right? We well, according to Time no Warner, place, no place according for you? to Time Warner, they're throwing us a bone and saying, "Well, you are on," but I don't consider that being on because there are a lot of people who don't want to come out of the closet. There are a lot of judges and lawyers and doctors and prominent people in society, along with the people that are blue collar workers, that are the construction workers and the nurses and and the the messengers and. The whole gamut of people, gay, straight, I don't get into labels, but I promote safe sex, and those people will not be getting those messages. They How did you get getting... started? Well, I got started uh, 14 years ago when, when VHSs were coming out, and people were buying tapes. At that time, there were very few clubs around of people to buy, to rent tapes from. So you had to invest a huge amount of money. It was 50 to $60 to buy a tape. So I decided to start a show that would review mail tapes at the time because the box covers usually never had what was inside or the quality of the tape was bad. You're going to start a show on cable television? Right. To review the tapes? Right. So we started the show and actually it, it started uh, on April 10th, 1982. And at that time it was uh, GMHC, Gay Men's Health Crisis, was only three months older than us. And AIDS uh, poked up its let ugly ask, head. Let me ask you about the, the videotapes um, and public access channels. Basically, the both of you are on, a, are on what is known as a least access right. channel. Right. Where we buy the time. Well, they they come around. Right. They sell you sell you the time. Mm -hmm. You pay what two or three hundred dollars an hour, something keep like that. Keep going. Keep going. It's more and more. What's more keep than that, going. right? <laughs> uh, but if that uh, deal was not available, and the government tells Time Warner to make that deal, then you couldn't go on cable television and the implication there is that's very bad for everybody because we lose your speech. But why couldn't you just put your programs, each of you, on video cassettes and sell them at the video cassette store? What's the, the funny difference? thing about this is I'm not in, bottom line is I am not really, I was not in it for the money. I'm not in it for the money. I'm, although well, I have to make. Yes, but, well, but he makes a lot for of the money first 12 no. years, Jim, first, <laughs> he's, he charges a lot more money than I do for my oh, it's ads. Al Goldstein makes a lot of money. Yeah, Al Goldstein. So why does he make money and you don't make a lot of money? He has a newspaper, so he can make oh, money. But nobody really makes that much money in cable unless you have enough time to sell advertisers to saturate. Yeah. However, 
for the first 12 years of my being on the air, I didn't have advertisers. I refused to take any type of advertisers because of the fact that I always thought that cable was something that was made to be non-commercial away from network. And that we, the cable would prevail over network. And we have hit into the networks as, as being on cable. Um, I saw overnights um, years ago when Dynasty, when its, when, its, when its heyday was there. And I had uh, the same type of ratings that Dynasty had at 9 p.m. as I did you, at midnight. You did? Really? Yes. yes. Well, but why should, you, why should you have this special deal? It's not What's a special, special? deal. Well, What's so special about well, it? Well, it's, it's there because the government says Time Warner. No, Make it's there no, because it, the government the, says free or, or the city. Speech. The city no, says. Wait a minute. It's there because the original concept of cable yeah. was for minorities to speak to each other. Right. This is one of the channels that minorities have a chance to speak and also and produce. Yeah, but why? I mean, you can speak. You can put the video cassettes in the store, and you can speak. And the only difference is you don't get Te access to the time where it's Time the Warner's audience. It's not your Te audience. Te no, television is a learning tool. It's a teaching tool. It's a way of communicating. Video cassettes are not a way of communicating. Video cassettes are for people who collect things and to look at. These are not places for learning. Television, originally, if you look at PBS, the whole reason for PBS is learning. But why should we have any of your stuff on? I mean, let's let's why not? Let, let, why not? Let, why let's not? really let's really get to the get to the nub of the because matter. Because Time Warner doesn't want your stuff on oh, because well, yeah. it is they think what? No, Fill Time Warner doesn't want Fill us on. They don't want it on there because they can use the channel. We're into their profits. You're we're into their into profits. Their profits as well. They have their own sex channels where they have their own television where they where you can call up. You don't have to be over 18. You don't have to be a subscriber. You just have to be in a subscriber's home with their phone number. Call up the phone number and say, "I want that sex movie" because they have sex movies on channel 63 here in Time Warner Cable, and you can get it. We're hitting into their revenues yeah, but as they're well. Also they can have the channel and sell it to somebody else. Yeah, but, but aren't they the saying enough is enough? We've got three sex channels. We don't want... It's not that. They can it's control it. Second of all, do you know how many producers there are on Channel 35? There are quite a few producers, which means they need a lawyer. They need a secretary. They need somebody to run the machines. They need somebody who's going to look at the tapes. They need a whole staff. They could get rid of this huge staff of people that are involved in processing our tapes and put in an automatic machine. And the bottom Economics. Line, yeah, the smart, bottom yeah. line but the is real, the real, the real e reason is they think it's indecent. No, the real reason is that they can isn't, make more isn't, money. Isn't it indecent your stuff? No, it isn't. My stuff is. We've never indecent. been. We've been never shut off the air. I've never gone to court. Nobody's ever sued us. We're showing material that is for a specific audience. Tell me what is indecent about the human body dancing naked. Tell me what is indecent, period. What is indecent? Right, what is indecent? What is well, indecent? indecent is something that is very offensive. What is offensive? Is what is offensive? Is what is offensive? It's very offensive and... It, what is offensive? It, uh, well, what offends most people is, is the use of genitalia. The uh -huh. use of genitalia? Well, the use of reference to it. Okay. Do you know... Why? Uh, Jim, well, I, Jim, I, I don't want to surprise you. you. But what? you are the product of the use of genitalia. I am? You are the product, and so oh, am yeah. I. Oh, I am the we I all that. are a product know, of the use of genitalia. Have, I know, but we don't have to have all that on top Why, why should that even be indecent? Why should that be considered indecent? Because, I'll tell you why. Tell me. Because children will see it. Our children now, why should minute, children now. be up at, at 10 o'clock p.m. when there's a school day, and why should ch children be unsupervised when they're watching pa television? Parents can take care of this, but parents don't you means think, parenting. if we believe in God, did God create everything except that one area? Well, what's your position? I mean, your position is parents, parents ought to look after the kids, but your, your position is... That you can show at any time? No, my position is that I, well, sure, I, yeah. I believe that some of my programs should be shown all the time, of course. Programs that, that deal with education, programs that dispel homophobia. Well, then, let me ask you this. The only reason that we have that amendment to the Cable Act, which is at issue in your lawsuit, you sued because there was an amendment to the Cable Act that required putting these scrambling in. scrambling or banning banning okay right. and guess who did that it was Jesse Helms who did that exactly right? his favorite and, topic and, and and guess how 
he decided that he was going to put that amendment in effect. He looked at your programs, and he thought they were disgusting. Well, then who asked him to look at our programs? He doesn't live I'll in New York you, City. He's not you know, the community you know standard. Him, you know who asked him to look at the programs? Who? Bob Peters. And he is? And he is the head of morality and media, and he lives here in New York. And he's making and a lot one, of money. And he doesn't and have night, a hand. He, and one he has he no, <laughs> Jimmy has no hand to take to take the remote control and to turn the channel? No, he's making he money on the deal. He's, he's, he's making he's money on the deal. Let's, let's oh, face it. Bob Peters yes, is making money yes, on the Yes, of course. Of art. How do you think he's getting a job? He's getting a job by looking at television and saying, oh, isn't this bad? He's supporting himself through us. Whatever happened to freedom of choice? Because if we weren't on television, he wouldn't have a job. In our country, whatever happened to freedom of choice? Isn't well, that the American way? Well, what do if we do you about, don't like AIDS, freedom of choice. Wait a minute, We're talking Jim? about the children. <laughs> Well, what's what so about funny, so what about, about parents? <laughs> parents? What about parents? Wait a minute. Look, look. If you shouldn't don't want AIDS, don't eat AIDS. Them? Do you know, you know what happened in the Supreme Court when they argued this case? Tell me. This fight. One of the <laughs> justices, indeed it was the justice who wrote Pacifica, Justice Stevens, right. I believe, asked one of the lawyers, what do we do about inert parents? Inert parent. Inert parent. <laughs> What's an inert parent? An inert parent is a parent who doesn't know what the kid is doing. Shouldn't the government come in and have certain controls to deal with the protection of kids from this indecent stuff that you guys make? The same way that the Board of Education protects children from not being educated with condom use, so that it protects them from some inert germ. Should the government be the big brother of everybody? Should the government be the person that goes around as the policeman of morality? Absolutely not. We have, a, we have a separation of church and state for a very, very important reason. We have a right to the morality that we believe in. We have that right. If we don't exercise that right, that is not my fault. We have the right, though. And we should not be forced into any one specific kind of morality. Because then it's going to say that whatever you do is right and whatever I do is wrong. You know, I think that's a very good argument for adults. Okay, but this you is know? even a bigger but, argument. But I don't, the I don't indecency? Have an we got the kids. Jim, the well, indecency. Well, aren't, aren't the parents supposed to be in control of them? Well, but come on. The indecency issue here is bigger than just television right now. It's going to be illegal for you to have a Playboy in your hand. The sex police are going to come and arrest you because you're reading Playboy, because you are, are, are thinking indecent thoughts. That's where it's coming to. We are not living in a Catholic or Christian I mean, we have freedom of religion, and we have freedom of no religion. We have freedom of choice, and we have freedom of no choice. But that's the freedom. That's the American way. Why should you have to be subject to something? You don't have your own control over yourself. You don't know your own morals. You don't know how to parent your child. Hey, look, look, it goes real, beyond look, that. Look, the, the, real, the, the, real, the real problem is, is that the kids are going to get at it. The kids are at it anyway. Well, then, 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 the, arg it but then anyway. the argument is, but then the argument is, then the argument is we shouldn't have any controls whatsoever. And your show should not only be on at 10 p.m., it should be on at 7. Do you think it should be on at 7? I should, should, your show be, should your show be on at 7? As a responsible producer, I sort of know the invisible lines. And I don't think that the children should be exposed to it at 7, although I don't do anything that they shouldn't be exposed to. Well, then they should be exposed to it. But children don't, you know, children don't, aren't interested it, in it sex is. until they reach the ages of 12 well, then or the, puberty. It, it and is the then right it should be of their a, right. a parent exactly. to govern what a child sees up to a certain age. The parent, it, the parent in giving birth to the child has a total responsibility to that child, a total responsibility to that child. Whether that parent exercises that responsibility, and certainly in our day and age, a lot of them don't. If a parent, when a parent gives birth to a child, that child is that parent's responsibility, and that's what the government should be saying. Exactly. Not that the government should take the place of the parent, but the government should be saying, parents, do your job. Okay. We will help We're you do We're not babysitters. Okay. Yeah. We're programmers. Yeah, but that, I'm glad you mentioned that word, because, here, because here's the problem. The problem is our economy has two people working. 
Mm -hmm. All right. So we have a lot of so-called latchkey children, right? Right. Right. All right. Now the latchkey child that comes home two or three in the afternoon is going to be unsupervised. Sure. What about from okay. the time not, not from from the, school now, to home? Now Maybe shouldn't the government have some sort of tiny umbrella to deal with that situation? No. So your program ought to be on at three in the afternoon, so all the latchkey kids can come home and watch it. The latchkey kids are actually on their way home from school picking up a Playboy maybe, or, or, or doing some unsafe sex because the, because the Board of Education isn't promoting well, let me well, let's, let's, go, let's go back to the, the responsibility yeah. of the parent. All right. The responsibility of the parent is not only to make sure what they're watching on television, but to explain to the child about sex, to explain to the child so the child has a basis most parents think that kids should learn sex from the streets. That's not the place to learn sex. The place to learn sex is from mommy and daddy who talk to you about it Did in ways in which you understand. Tell you about sex? My mother and father didn't. But Mine that doesn't didn't either. But that Don't is not me. where we are today. <laughs> exactly. Where we are today is a totally different world than where you were brought up and where I was brought up. Exactly. And even five years ago. But that's the whole thing. Sex in our country is a taboo because it's under the rug. It's okay for violence, um, but not for sex. I mean, it, sex is a natural act that we do, like scrubbing our teeth. You think that it would be educational for a parent in terms of explaining sex. Body parts, sex, even body sex parts. Sex to his children. To have as part of that educational program watching your shows. But certainly. Absolutely. If the parent is there with the child, Absolutely. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea because I the parent, parent can in, explain to the child what is going on, what's happening, and, and from a viewpoint of maturity, teach a child a better understanding of what his body is about or what her that, body is about. I'll throw a tough one at both of you because you both have uh, gay shows, but do you think that includes simulated uh, same-sex sex? Why not? As long as, it's be, as long as the child who is watching it is being educated about it, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as it's being played safe, your, your condom use, or you know what you're getting into. Same-sex sex has happened since the beginning of time. I'm sorry to disappoint anybody. This is not a new phenomenon, and it's not only happening in America. There are homosexuals in every country of the world. In fact, homosexuality is universal. It's the only thing that is universal about this world, homosexuality. We exist in every country, in every religion, in every place of this world. So, when we're talking about homosexuality and people want to say some things against it, it exists beyond. It's nice that we let heterosexuals exist. <laughs> All right, we've, we've come to the end of uh, this program. I want to thank you both for being here. It's, it's, been, it's been great. We, I can see why you uh, won your case with uh, Time Warner. It is and, only just a small... And we will soon find out... A small thing. If we haven't already found out by the time this right. show shows whether you're going to win... They may censor you because we use the word sex. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Robin Bird. Thank you all. Thank Thanks, you, Jim. Jim.